Hi, welcome back to Xerox for one for one for one for one. Today we're gonna solve the last exercise from uh, Wrap Emporium, and this is gonna be about uh, stack pivoting. We will directly try to get a code execution, skipping the step to simply get the flag. So let's uh, just dive into the challenge and let's begin uh, running it. You can notice that the binary leaks an address suggesting us to use it to do stack pivoting. So let's keep this in mind. This time the binary asks for uh, two strings. We can trigger the crash with the debruging pattern. We can inspect the core dump with GDB. We now look at the value inside the our pattern to compute the right offset to the return pointer. Uh, we are interested in functions inside the binary in the text section. And we essentially have four functions. The main um, takes care of uh, printing the welcome messages, then uh, mallocs a big chunk of memory, uh, which is then passed to pawnme, and uh, later it uh, frees this memory. In the pawnme, as usual, we have the vulnerability, but this time the buffer overflow is caused by an FGTS, so we don't have infinite space. F uh, and actually, we have space just for three gadgets. We have an external library which contains this foothold function, which is never called by the program, and uh, a red to win function, which isn't even imported into the program. So essentially we should use this call to populate uh, the entry of the global offset table for futal function and use uh, the offset to read to win. So once we have the entry for uh, futal function populated inside the global offset table, we just need to add uh, this offset to get the address of uh, the read to win function. But since we're gonna go directly for a code execution, we are not really interested into this function. So let's just move on. The last function is uh, useful gadgets, which contains a set of uh, gadgets that we can use to build our op chain. We have a pop, an exchange, a move, an add. And uh, we can combine these gadgets to get the interesting primitives. For example, we can combine the pop RAX with the move to have an arbitrary read of 8 bytes in memory. We can use the pop array x and exchange uh, rspr ax to perform stack pivoting. And uh, we can use uh, the add function to add uh, arbitrary values to array x if you are able to control rbp. Actually when the overflows happens we do control RBP, however we can uh, look for a pop RBP gadget to always have uh, this uh, capability. So let's uh, think how we can use these gadgets to achieve code execution. We can use the pop RAX and exchange RSP RAX to do stack pivoting. We're gonna pivot our stack onto the leaked address which is an address inside the heap, which contains the big chunk that was allocated with the malloc in the main function. Then we can use the pop RAX and the move RAX to read arbitrary memory. And we're interested into the entry inside of the global offset table for, for example, put S. At this point of the execution, it will be already populated with the, the address of the putess inside the, the libc. We're gonna use uh, the pop rbp and add rax rbp to add uh, the offset between uh, the putess and uh, 
something else to have a pointer inside array X to the code that we want to execute. And finally, if we manage to find a gadget such as uh, call array X or jump array X, we can um, continue the execution inside this uh, code. Now we have everything we need to control array X. So now we just have to find something useful to execute. We're gonna use some very powerful gadgets that are inside, that are present inside uh, libc, which are called the one gadget. They essentially will execute v uh, bnsh without the need for you to set up arguments and so on. You just have to satisfy some constraints which vary depending on which gadget you use. Uh, you can use this uh, tool named one gadget to automatically find uh, these gadgets and their relatives uh, and their relative. Uh, constraints using symbolic execution and it will nicely print for you the gadgets and constraints. Let me run it on my libc. As you can see we found uh, three gadgets. I'm just gonna start with the last one and uh, since it is not so uncommon to have null values inside the stack I won't uh, spend time trying to set up the stack but I'll try to rely on luck, at least in the first place. Then uh, if uh, it doesn't work, uh, we can uh, fix things. But I'm feeling lucky. So let's have a brief recap of our exploration strategy. We combine these two gadgets to perform stack pivoting. We pivot our stack onto the address inside the heap where our next uh, piece of the wrap chain is stored. The stage two will uh, take care of leaking an address from libc, precisely the address of put s. Then we set rbp to the offset between uh, put s and uh, uh, this magic gadget inside the libc. Then we add this value to rax and we finally jump to rax. So let me show you an exploit implementing this strategy. As you can see, we have uh, our gadgets. We define uh, some functions to build uh, more easily our options. So we open the binary, the library, and we spawn our process. Then we compute the offset inside the libc. We then uh, read the leaked address. We create our first uh, wrap chain, which will simply set our SP to this leaked value. And we create a payload, which simply has 40 bytes of padding and then uh, this wrap chain. And uh, the execution will then uh, move on to the stage two of our wrap chain, which will be stored in our new stack. Here we read the got entry for put s, we increment it by the right uh, value and we jump to array x which points to our uh, magic gadget, hopefully getting code execution. So let's try the exploit. Here we have uh, the offset the leaked value that you can see is the same uh, inside the, the wrap chain. Use the pop array x to set uh, the register. We exchange it with RSP, achieving stack pivoting. We then uh, pop uh, the got address of put s inside the array x. We the reference the pointer with the move instruction. We then set rbp to the offset. We add it to array x and we finally jump to array x. So if everything worked fine and the constraints for the gadgets were satisfied, we should have a, a working shell. And uh, here is the flag. That's all for today. See you next time. Bye.